<laughs> Once, long ago, there was a forest known as Eldora, a place of such beauty that it seemed to belong to the gods themselves. The trees towered like ancient titans, their trunks gleaming with silvery bark that shimmered in the sunlight. The leaves were a vibrant green, every one of them alive with magic, fluttering in the wind as if they whispered secrets of the cosmos. Flowers bloomed in every color imaginable, from delicate whites and soft blues to fiery reds and deep purples, casting a fragrance so sweet it was said to heal the soul. Streams flowed with crystal clear water, their ripples singing a quiet, peaceful song, and the creatures that lived there fay, sprites, unicorns, and the great, majestic stags moved with a grace that seemed to defy the laws of nature. Eldora was a sanctuary, a place where the world beauty of the world and the divine magic of the gods danced in harmony. The golden era, before Asriel's influence took root, Eldora was a place of natural wonder and harmony. The trees were tall and ancient, their boughs thick with vibrant green leaves that seemed to shimmer in the sunlight. The forest was filled with creatures of light, gentle deer with coats that shone like silver, playful squirrels that darted between branches, and majestic elk that roamed the meadow. Even the flowers bloomed with an ethereal beauty, their petals glowing faintly under the moonlight. It was said that the forest was blessed by the gods, for it was a place of peace, untouched by the harshness of the world. The river that ran through Eldora sparkled with crystal clear water, and its shores were lined with soft mosses and sweet-smelling wildflowers. The woods had an almost magical quality those who entered felt a sense of tranquility and awe, as if they were walking in the presence of something sacred. Magical creatures, such as the graceful moonbirds, whose feathers glimmered like stardust, flitted through the trees. Fairies, small but radiant beings, often danced in the meadows beneath the towering oaks, leaving behind trails of glowing dust. Even the ancient trees themselves were said to possess a form of wisdom, their gnarled roots and twisting trunks imbued with a mystical energy that connected the forest to the very fabric of the world. For centuries, Eldora was revered as a place of beauty and protection. Travelers spoke of its wonders in hushed tones, and even the Knights of Dummersville would journey into its depths to seek solace or to ask the ancient trees for guidance. It was a sanctuary, untouched by war and conflict, a place where the forces of nature and magic lived in harmony. But this paradise was not to last, as real, the Dark Mage, was once a brilliant scholar and a seeker of power. Obsessed with the forbidden arts of necromancy and dark magic, he sought to harness the power of the world's primal forces. His ambition, however, twisted his mind and soul, leading him down a path of corruption. He discovered a way to corrupt the very essence of life itself through the transformation of flesh and spirit. It was in the heart of Eldora, where the veil between worlds was thin, that Asriel performed his darkest ritual, slowly twisting the fabric of the land with his dark sorcery. Asriel's magic seeped into the soil, poisoning the very earth. The trees, once vibrant and full of life, began to wither, their leaves turning black and curling in on themselves. The once verdant meadows began to rot, turning into dark, fetid swamps. The river, once clear as crystal, darkened to a murky brown, its waters running sluggishly, like veins filled with poison. The air, once fresh and sweet, became thick with the smell of decay and death. The songs of birds fell silent, replaced by the groans of the earth and the howls of strange, nightmarish creatures. The forest began to change, slowly at first, and then all at once. The ancient trees that once stood as guardians of the land began to twist and contort, their trunks growing twisted and gnarled, their limbs reaching out like clawed fingers, as though grasping for something lost. The once pristine clearing, where the fairies danced became a haunted, oppressive glade, the air thick with malevolent energy. Flowers that once bloomed with colors of every hue now turned to blackened husks, their petals withered and dry, as if drained of all life. 
They spread across the forest floor, consuming everything in their path. Rise of the Orcs. He took captive the humans, who wandered into the forest, twisted their bodies and minds, and turned them into monstrous Orcs. With each transformation, he imbued them with dark magic that gave them an insatiable hunger for conquest. The Orcs became his soldiers, his minions, and with them, he sought to overthrow the kingdom of Dummersville, a prosperous city ruled by a just and noble king. Asriel's first creation was the Orc Scouts, small but cunning and stealthy. These creatures were quick to adapt to the dense, magical forest, using its natural camouflage to hide and strike at any knight or adventurer who dared to venture to deep into Eldora. Their eyes glowed with a sickly yellow light, and they could move silently between the trees, disappearing like shadows when they weren't needed. Their task was simple, scout the forest, monitor the movements of the kingdom's knights, and relay information back to Azrael. They would often ambush any who got too close, sending back mutilated bodies as warnings. Next came the Orc Warriors, the brutal foot soldiers of Azrael's army, towering beasts with twisted, muscular frames. They were clad in dark, spiked armor forged in the blackest depths of Azrael's magic. Their eyes burned with fury, and their hunger for destruction was insatiable. These orcs formed the main fighting force, charged with the task of clearing the way for Azriel's advance toward Dummersville. They fought with axes, swords, and brutal savagery, tearing through the ranks of knights who stood in their way. Their roars filled the air, echoing through the cursed woods like the screams of the damned. Not all orcs, however, were content with brute force. Among Azriel's creations were the Orc Rogues, swift and silent assassins, who preferred the shadows over open combat. These Orcs had been imbued with the ability to vanish into the underbrush, striking with poison blades that left their victims writhing in agony. They specialized in taking out isolated knights, killing silently and quickly before disappearing back into the darkness of the forest. They were the forest silent killers feared by all who knew their name. As Azriel's power grew, he began creating more specialized orcs to further his dominion. The surf trading orcs were some of his most cruel and calculating. These orcs would patrol the edges of the forest, capturing peasants or wandering knights who strayed too far from the safety of the kingdom. Once captured, they would be dragged deep into the forest, sold into slavery, or worse, twisted into orcs themselves. Their trade was one of both flesh and spirit capturing the vulnerable to fuel Azriel's army. Among the most treacherous of Azriel's creations were the gold orc traders. These orcs, sly and cunning, would raid villages on the outskirts of Dummersville, taking plundered gold and rare treasures to fuel Azriel's growing dark empire. They had no loyalty except to gold, and the power it gave them, trading it with the darkest corners of the world for more magic more weaponry, and more minions. They were the merchants of despair, bartering the riches of the land for the destruction of all that was good. The mudcrawler orcs were the lowest of Azriel's creatures, dwelling in the bogs and marshes that had once been a peaceful part of the forest. Their skin was thick and slimy, covered in a layer of muck that protected them from the acidic bogs they called home. They had the strength to wade through the swamps, emerging from the muck to drag down unsuspecting travelers, drowning them in the fetid waters. Their long claws could tear through armor, and their brutal nature made them a terror for anyone who wandered into the marshes. Then there were the acid spitter orcs the most dangerous of Azriel's creations. These orcs had skin mottled with patches of dark, poisonous fluid that burned through metal and flesh alike. When threatened, they could spit globules of acid from their mouths, and their mere touch was enough to melt steel. These orcs thrived in the darkest, most corrupted parts of Eldora, their very presence polluting the air and water. Knights who ventured too far into these cursed parts of the forest never returned. Their armor corroded, and their bodies consumed by the deadly acid. Azriel also birthed the knife throwers, deadly assassins who carried an arsenal of sharp, enchanted knives. These orcs were expert marksmen, able to hurl their blades with deadly accuracy. 
Each knife they threw was laced with Azriel's dark magic, capable of causing unimaginable pain. They would stalk their prey from a distance, picking off knights and soldiers one by one, until the air was filled with the smell of blood and the distant screams of the fallen. Among the most feared of Azriel's orcs were the Daggercasters, a deadly breed of orc that combined dark magic with the art of throwing daggers. These orcs wielded enchanted daggers capable of slicing through the very fabric of reality, unleashing bursts of dark energy with each throw. Their agility was unmatched, and they could summon a flurry of blades that would strike their enemies from multiple angles. A dagger caster in battle was a terrifying sight, as the air would crackle with dark energy as their daggers cut through the skies, bringing ruin to all who stood against them. Orc grunts. The orc grunts are the most basic and numerous of Azriel's army, their bodies twisted and strengthened by dark magic. They are the frontline warriors, often seen as the cannon fodder of the invasion force. Appearance. These orcs are hulking brutes, standing over seven feet tall with muscular, stocky frames. Their skin is a sickly shade of green, pulped with patches of blackened scales. Jagged teeth protrude from their mouths, and their eyes glow a dim red, like embers in a dying fire. Their bodies are covered in crude armor made from rusted metal scraps and bone. Abilities. The Org Grunts are simple, brutish warriors who rely on raw physical strength and aggression. They wield large, crude weapons iron clubs, spiked maces, and rusted swords. They are relentless in combat, charging headlong into battle without fear. Driven by Azriel's dark will. Though their combat skills are basic, their endurance is unnerving, able to keep fighting long after most would have fallen. Warlock Orcs. The Warlock Orcs are a terrifying subclass of Orcs, imbued with arcane knowledge by Azriel himself. These Orcs don't engage directly in physical combat, but instead use dark sorcery to summon the dead, adding even more bodies to the ever-growing army of the Dark Mage. Appearance. Warlock Orcs retain the hulking build of the Grunts, but their features are more gaunt, with sunken eyes and skin stretched thin over their bones. Their faces are lined with dark tattoos and symbols, indicating their mastery over forbidden magics. Some carry twisted staffs, made from the bones of fallen creatures, while others wear tattered robes that sway unnaturally in the wind, as if alive. Abilities The Warlock Orcs can channel Azriel's dark magic to summon zombie orcs from the grave, raising their fallen comrades to fight again. These orcs are almost useless in direct combat, as they rely solely on their summoned dead. The Warlock Orcs are defenseless when not in proximity to their zombies, making them vulnerable to attack if isolated. However, they excel in support roles, bolstering the strength of the army by raising new threats from the battlefield. Their incantations cause the dead to rise with horrific sounds, grating and unnatural, as if the very earth itself is screaming. Axe Thrower Orcs the Axe Thrower Orcs are ranged specialists, relying on their deadly accuracy and the power of their throwing axes to pick off enemies from a distance. These Orcs are masters of throwing their axes with precision, capable of hitting multiple targets with a single throw. Appearance These Orcs are slightly leaner than the standard grunts, though still muscular and imposing. They wear light armor to maintain mobility often made from tattered cloaks and pieces of scavenged armor. Their eyes are sharp and calculating, and they carry multiple axes on their belts and across their backs, each one meticulously crafted for maximum lethality. Abilities, the axe thrower orcs rely on their expertise, with throwing axes as their primary weapon. These axes are designed to be thrown with great force, capable of piercing through armor, or striking multiple enemies in quick succession. The Orcs are highly skilled in range combat, using the trees and terrain to hide their movements and strike from unexpected angles. However, they are weaker in close combat, and will retreat if pressed, relying on their comrades to protect them. Hellhounds The Hellhounds are grotesque, demonic creatures that serve as both mounts and independent attackers in Azriel's army. Created from dark magic and bound to Azriel's will, they are as much a symbol of his power, as they are instruments of terror on the battlefield. 
Appearance. Hellhounds are massive, dog-like creatures, with sleek black fur that seems to shimmer with an infernal glow. Their eyes burn with an unholy fire, and their breath trails smoke, their snarls echoing with a low, guttural growl. Their fangs are long and sharp, dripping with venom, and their claws are like curved daggers. The air around them is thick with the stench of sulfur and brimstone. Abilities. Hellhounds are fast and vicious, capable of sprinting across the battlefield with incredible speed. They have enhanced strength and endurance, able to tear through armor and flesh with ease. Their bites are venomous, and their claws can render paths even the toughest of warriors. They are also capable of breathing fire, belching out torrents of searing flames that can incinerate anything in their path. Though they are intelligent and capable of independent thought, they are fiercely loyal to Azrael, and will obey his commands without question. Zombie Orcs, once Orcs who have fallen in battle, the Zombie Orcs are reanimated by the dark magic of Azrael's Warlock Orcs. These Orcs are no longer truly alive, but their bodies continue to move, driven by dark energy and an insatiable hunger for destruction. Appearance. The Zombie Orcs are horrific to behold, their flesh hanging from their decaying frames in tattered strips. Their faces are contorted in agony, eyes glazed over with an empty, soulless stare. The once muscular bodies of the orcs have begun to rot and decay, with exposed bone and blackened, festering wounds. Some of them drag broken weapons, while others simply claw at their enemies with their gnarled hands. Abilities. The zombie orcs are relentless in their pursuit of prey, charging forward with horrifying shrieks and moans. They lack any real coordination or skill, but make up for it with sheer numbers and tenacity. They are slow moving, but have a horrifying resilience, continuing to fight long after they should have died. Their movements are jerky and unnatural, causing them to make horrific, guttural noises as they lunge at their enemies. Though not particularly strong, their overwhelming numbers and relentless attack make them a nightmare to face. They are often used in waves to wear down enemy forces. The Orc King, the Orc King, created by Azrael's dark sorcery, was the embodiment of pure evil a monstrous figure crafted from the deepest well of malice and necromantic power. His form was a grotesque amalgamation of muscle, bone, and bloodlust, standing taller and more fearsome than any Orc before him. His skin was thick and ashen grey, marred by the touch of dark magic that had infused his being. His eyes, bloodshot and burning with crimson fire, were windows into his insatiable hunger for destruction. His teeth were razor sharp, his tusks long and twisted, and his hands bore claws like obsidian daggers. But it was not only his monstrous form that made the Orc King terrifying, it was his command over the entire Orc horde. For the Orc King was not merely a warrior, he was a tyrant. Azrael, in his sickening ambition to break the kingdom of Dummersville, had imbued the Orc King with dark powers that allowed him to control the minds and wills of the other Orcs. With a single command, the Orc King could make the savage horde bow to him, move in unison, and carry out Azrael's fell schemes with ruthless precision. The Orc King's rule, under the rule of the Orc King, the Orcs of Eldora became a terrifying, near-unbreakable army. They no longer fought for land, for treasure, or for their tribe's honor. Instead, they were united in a singular, terrifying purpose, to serve Azrael's plan for the downfall of Dummersville. The Orc King was the unchallenged leader of the Horde, and every Orc knew that disobedience meant death. His influence over them was absolute where other Orc chieftains might struggle to maintain control over their troops. The Orc King had no such weakness. His charisma was an extension of Azrael's dark will, and any Orc who defied him was swiftly crushed. The Orc King's war strategies were terrifying in their simplicity and effectiveness. His army surged like a tidal wave across the land, destroying everything in their path. With his overwhelming strength, he led the charge, followed by orcs of every kind, warriors, scouts, rogues, and berserkers all united under his banner of destruction. The orc king's command was absolute, his authority so powerful, that even the most vicious of orc factions, 
would bend the knee in fear and reverence. The Orc King's deadly weapons. The Orc King was not just feared for his strength and command he was feared for his weaponry. Forged from the heart of Azrael's dark sorcery, the Orc King wielded the Blood Reaver Axe, a massive weapon of obsidian black steel, forged in the darkest forges of Eldora. The Axe's blade was covered in ancient runes that pulsed with necromantic energy. It was capable of cleaving through steel, wood, and bone as if they were paper, and each swing carried the weight of Azrael's dark power. The very air seemed to ripple with malicious energy, whenever the Orc King swung the Blood Reaver Axe in battle, and the ground beneath him would tremble, as though the earth itself feared the Axe's power. In addition to the Blood Reaver, the Orc King carried serpent-tipped blades, curved like daggers, but wickedly sharp. These blades were made to pierce the armor of knights and tear through their flesh. They were laced with poison and cursed magic, leaving wounds that would not heal and draining the life from their victims. The Orc King had a preferred method of attack. He would engage in close combat, using his brute strength to overwhelm the knights, while his blades rained down with deadly precision. No knight, no matter how skilled, could withstand his onslaught for long. The Orc King's hunger for souls. But what truly made the Orc King terrifying was his insatiable hunger for souls. It was said that Azril had twisted the Orc King's essence, making him an eternal predator of life force. After battle, when the bodies of slain knights littered the field, the Orc King would stalk through the carnage, his bloodshot eyes scanning for any knight still alive. His hunger for their souls was legendary. It was not enough to simply kill his enemies, he consumed their essence. He would tear open the chest of the dying knight and drink deeply from their soul, feasting on their life force, growing stronger with every soul he consumed. It was this vile act that gave him a near unfathomable strength, and with each soul he took, the Orc King's thirst only grew more intense. His laugh deep, guttural, and wicked echoed through the battlefield whenever he devoured his victims. It was a sound of madness, of pure evil, one that would chill the heart of any who heard it. The knights who survived encounters with the Orc King spoke of this laugh, saying it was the last thing they heard before they were struck down. Some even said that those who heard it felt their very souls being drawn into the Orc King's hunger, a terrifying sensation that haunted them long after they had escaped with their lives. The bounty on the Orc King's head, the reign of terror wrought by the Orc King did not go unnoticed. The Kingdom of Dummersville, under the leadership of Asterisk Asterisk, King Louis Asterisk Asterisk, responded by placing an enormous bounty on the Orc King's head. The King, a man of wisdom and bravery, knew that if the Orc King was not stopped, the very heart of the Kingdom would fall to Azrael's forces. At first, the bounty was a modest sum, a reward for any knight who could strike down the Orc King and end his reign of terror. But as the Orc King's attacks grew more brutal, and the toll on the kingdom became more severe, the bounty increased daily. It wasn't just gold that was offered, it was land, titles, and the kingdom's gratitude. The people of Dummersville rallied to support their knights, hoping that one would rise to challenge the Orc King and claim the reward. Yet, each time the Orc King fell in battle, the knights soon realized the horrifying truth. The Orc King could not truly be slain, no matter how many times they cut him down. No matter how many knights laid their lives on the line to take his head, he always returned. The bounty grew larger, but so did the fear. It was as though the Orc King could never be truly defeated, no matter the cost. Asriel's dark ritual, the secret behind the Orc King's immortality lay in Asriel's twisted dark magic. If the Orc King were slain by the knights, Azrael would call upon a forbidden ritual to resurrect him. It was an ancient, abominable practice, known only to Azrael and the darkest of his followers. The ritual required the blood of an orc, the sacrifice of a fallen warrior, and the casting of ancient incantations that could weave the orc king's spirit back into his cursed body. As part of the ritual, Azrael would chant words of binding and summoning, calling the orc king's soul back from the void. The dark magic would reforge his body, re his bones and sinew, and breathe life back into his lifeless form. 
But this resurrection came with a cruel price. The Orc King would lose all memory of his past life. His mind would be wiped clean, as though he were born anew. However, this did not mean freedom for the Orc King. Instead, Asriel's curse doomed him to repeat the same cycle of destruction over and over again, without knowledge of his previous deaths or battles. Each time the Orc King rose again, it was as if he were experiencing the first battle once more. He would command his forces, fight against the knights, and drink their souls in an endless cycle of destruction, only to be slain again, only to be brought back forever. Asriel's magic ensured that the Orc King was always forced to return, never learning from his mistakes, never breaking free from the chain of torments that bound him. An endless cycle, thus, the Orc King became a figure trapped in an eternal loop, forever reborn to fight against the Knights of Dummersville, forever doomed to seek his victory and consume the souls of his enemies. Though the Knights continued to fight bravely, they knew that with each death of the Orc King, they only bought themselves a brief respite, for he would always return. The bounty on his head would only grow, the kingdom's hope would dwindle, and the people of Dummersville would continue to suffer beneath the unrelenting onslaught of Asriel's dark power. This endless cycle of death and rebirth was not just a tragedy for the knights, it, it was a curse for the Orc King himself, who was no longer a true being but a twisted puppet in Asriel's grand scheme for domination. The Orc King would never escape his fate, for he was bound to the very heart of Asriel's maleficent plans trapped in a cycle of death, destruction, and rebirth, with no hope of release. And so, as the story goes, under Asriel's dark influence, Eldora was transformed. The once beautiful forest became a land of nightmares, a place of eternal twilight beneath the blood moon that hung in the sky, harbinger of doom. The once lush trees were twisted and gnarled, their branches reaching out like skeletal hands, casting long shadows over the poisoned earth. The waters of the streams ran black with the corruption of Asriel's magic, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. The creatures of the forest once gentle and magical had been driven away or mutated by Asriel's dark rituals. Only his army of orcs remained, marching in unison beneath the dark banners of their master. Even in the heart of Eldora, where the forest had been tainted by Asriel's dark magic, nature's resilience fought against the oppressive shadow. Deep within the twisted groves and foul bogs, where the orcs dwelled, and the air was thick with malice, there remained pockets of life-hidden treasures that could aid the knights on their perilous quests. Though much of the forest had been corrupted, the magic of the earth ancient and stubborn, had not entirely yielded. Some plants continued to grow, their power undiminished by the blight that surrounded them. The Knights of Dummersville and to seek these rare items, for they were crucial in their battle against the overwhelming tide of darkness. Healing mushrooms, in the most shadowed corners of Eldora, where the air itself seemed to burn with the weight of Asriel's influence, there grew luminous fungus, a variety of bioluminescent mushroom that glowed faintly in the dark. These mushrooms, small and white with blue veins of light running through their caps, were a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. When eaten, the mushrooms held potent healing properties, capable of closing wounds and mending broken bones. The knights who managed to find these precious mushrooms could stave off the worst of their injuries for they healed both physical wounds and exhaustion from prolonged combat. But finding them wasn't easy. The luminous fungus thrived only in the darkest parts of Eldora, in areas where the sun's light had all but vanished. Apples of vitality, in small groves hidden from the orc patrols, the golden heart apples continued to flourish despite the encroaching darkness. These apples were of a deep, radiant gold, their skin smooth and unblemished by the taint of the forest, when eaten, the apples restored energy and vitality to the knights, allowing them to continue their quests even after days of grueling combat. The apples were said to have been a gift from the forest's ancient spirits, a final blessing from the gods who once watched over Eldora. The golden heart apples did more than restore physical strength, they also brought clarity to the mind. A knight who ate one before battle 
would find their senses sharpened, and their entrance bolstered. The apples grew in small, secluded orchards that were difficult to find, but offered safe haven to those who had the foresight to look for them. The knights treasured these apples above all else, for they could turn the tide of a battle when hope seemed all but lost. Healing herbs scattered throughout the darkest stretches of Eldora, where the land had been warped by Azrael's magic, various herbs still thrived. These plants, though small and often overlooked, were of immense value to the knights, for they could be used to create potions, poultices, and salves that healed wounds, eased poison, and soothed fatigue. Barley 4 Recipes Barley, once a staple of Eldra's agricultural regions, had not disappeared entirely in the wake of Azrael's dark magic. Though much of the land had become inhospitable, patches of barley still grew in small clusters along the forest's edge. These hardy grains could be ground into flour and used in the creation of breads, soups, and other foods that provided sustenance to the knights. Barley could be used in making travelers loaf, a dense, nutritious bread that could keep a knight nourished during long journeys through Eldora. Barley was also used in brewing warrior's ale, a special brew that had a slight energizing effect on those who drank it. The barley was carefully cultivated by the kingdom's healers and apothecaries, who would often venture into the outer fringes of the forest to harvest it. It was said that the barley carried the last traces of Eldra's original magic, and when consumed, it had the power to invigorate a knight's body and spirit. Berries of power, amidst the twisted, dark trees, small bushes of asterisk knife, it shade berries asterisk and asterisk moonshine raspberries asterisk grew hidden beneath the canopy, providing a small but powerful boon to the knights. These berries, though dangerous to eat in large quantities due to their potent properties, could be used sparingly to enhance the knight's abilities in battle. Nightshade berries or simply blackberries, despite their name, these berries were not deadly in small doses. When consumed before a battle, they could heighten the knight's physical strength with bow and arrow. They also had a rare quality that allowed a knight to remain vigilant and alert, even when sleep-deprived. Moonshine raspberries, or simply the raspberry, found near the edges of the darkest woods. These raspberries were small, deep purplish red fruits that glowed faintly under the light of the blood moon. Consuming them would temporarily enhance a knight's agility and reflexes, making them nearly as quick and silent as the orcs who stalked the forest. Archers who ate these berries found their aim to be more precise, and their arrows struck true even at the furthest distance for the knights. These berries were a rare but potent gift from the forest's fading magic. Carrots of Insight Perhaps the most unexpected of Eldra's surviving treasures were the humble carrots of clarity. These carrots, which grew in patches of fertile soil hidden beneath the twisted roots of the trees, were not like the ordinary root vegetables that the knights might find in their homeland. When eaten, the carrots enhanced a knight's ability to track the ox, sharpening their senses and giving them the uncanny ability to read the faintest signs left behind by the orc's movements broken twigs, displaced dirt, and the subtle, almost imperceptible scents the orcs left in their wake. The carrots were particularly prized by the knights tasked with hunting the orcs. They were said to provide a form of mystical insight, allowing the knights to see the path the orcs had taken, almost as though the land itself whispered its secrets to the eater. A handful of carrots could make the difference between losing the orc's trail or striking them down at the moment of surprise. The last hope of the forest, these items, though rare and difficult to find, were the last glimmers of hope in a land overtaken by darkness. They were the only forces that could turn the tide for the knights, allowing them to endure the long battles ahead. As the forest became increasingly overrun by Azriel's monstrous orcs, the knights ventured deeper into Eldora, braving the dangers in search of these life-giving treasures. They knew that every herb, every berry, every apple and mushroom was more than just a simple remedy. It was a weapon, a tool, and a gift from the ancient powers of the forest, which refused to give up hope. Even in the face of corruption, 
In this way, the knights held on to the faintest hope, that Eldora, for all its dark transformation, still held fragments of its former beauty, and that the power of nature could still be used to fight back against the ever-encroaching shadows. They carried with them not only steel and courage, but the knowledge that, in a forest of nightmares, these rare treasures were the only things standing between them and utter destruction. It is now the duty of the Knights of Dummersville to hunt these orcs, to track them into the heart of Eldora, and put an end to Azrael's reign of terror. The Knights venture into the forest, armed with bow and arrow, shields, and the courage of the kingdom, but few return. Those who do speak of the horrors, they witnessed of the endless hordes of orcs, of the twisted trees and the constant, unrelenting darkness. The battle rages on, and the once beautiful forest of Eldora now stands as a grim reminder of Azrael's power. The knights must stop the endless tide of orcs before they can reach Dummersville and destroy the kingdom. But as long as Azrael's dark magic endures, the forest will remain a land of darkness, and the knight's quest may never truly end. Thanks for tuning in ladies and gentlemen. If you want more content like this, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below letting me know what you think. Until next time, may legends be born.